to Warcraft Total War version 2.3 and the Trade Coalition campaign. I played this campaign yesterday too for 3 hours. I fought the Battle of Sulfurak, which I lost in the end after 3 hours or 2 hours 51 minutes, I believe. Okay, and because the leader of the faction, Trade Prince Jaster, died, we also lost the campaign. I don't know if M Mughal Rastunk is the heir. We m might not have an heir actually, but. Uh, the leader died so we lost the campaign. I don't want to use the, the leader. I'm gonna send the leader, Trade Prince Jaster, back to Undermine. So we need to move back with him to the fleet here. And then we need to send him to Undermine, the capital of the Trade Coalition, or the Goblins. The Trade Coalition also includes Ogres, Humans and Trolls. Even to their main, main roster are the hubgoblins and the goblins. In the later, in the next release, they might have the humans, the trolls and the ogres available from their areas at the start of the game, but in this version they need to hold human areas for the human units and they need to hold troll areas for the troll units and they need to hold ogre areas for the ogre units, so they are not available from the goblin areas. They have taken one human area, so they should have uh, bandits ha uh, from this area. They might need to build the right buildings for that. As far as I can see, we can get a training ground uh, construction. Uh, so, uh, to get goblin rabble and goblin infantry, but if we uh, build this building, then we might get the option to build another one which will give us even better troops, and I believe that the uh, humans should be able, uh, available from this area as it's a former bandit area if they are not available from there uh, that's gonna change in the next release because they're supposed to get them there ok so we have three armies of goblins had a large army under trader in trade prince Jaster I believe he came from here then we have the one under Mughal Rastung too they failed to take the settlement and we have this force uh, we are not going to try and take the city by by uh, simply <coughs> uh, stopping the battle we, we will uh, instead we will wait them out they can punch until surrender 11 turns they can hold out for 11 turns that's a long that's a very long time other factions might actually uh, conquer a lot of rebel territory in 11 turns. So if I leave the area, we will instead end up uh, with uh, the Thraki trolls building up an army again and moving out. So we, we will need to stay here for 11 turns with both of these armies and we will send extra troops there from, from the other areas. But <coughs> we will. Uh, <coughs> We will move uh, the leader of the faction to the ships. Then we will accept an adopted general, despite them not having any traits. We will add an adopted general to the army instead. We need two adopted generals. If we're unlucky, the adopted general will spawn in one of the cities outside of Kalimdor. But if we're lucky, they will show up in Gadgetsan, in the Shimmering Flats, or in Ostriker Cove. That's where we want the, the adopted general. In the worst case, they spawn in Undermine or in Venture Bay or in any other area. And then we'll need to, to send ships to get them. F because we want this army to be led by a general, but we do not want <coughs> we do not want the, the leader of the faction to be anywhere else but uh, in Undermine. That will prevent us from losing the game uh, through regicide, you know, when you lose the faction leader and the faction heir, you lose the game, get game over, and uh, we do not want that, so, so the leader should be in Undermine, because Undermine and the other Ayers here, they are never attacked, I have seen the AI attack Tel Abim, this Ayer, so it's not safe, but I believe that Suldasar here and Undermine, they are safe, same with this area and the Murloc area over here and the demon area here all of these areas are never invaded by the AI well Tel Abim is invaded sometimes this this area is invaded sometimes and then of course 
these Ayers are close enough to Kalimdor to be invaded. And these are also invaded. I've seen the Horde take them. This Ayer no, no longer has a settlement, but back when it had a settlement, it was never invaded by the AI. That's why we removed the settlement. Okay, so this, there are a bunch of Ayers that will never be invaded. That's why we want the leader of the faction in Undermine. Okay, we can't move this turn. We've moved everyone, I believe. So we will. Uh, might want to build something, recruit something, and get troops in Undermine. We can also run out of money if we buy too much. I kind of want. We have a mage here. I kind of want another Shredder unit there, good. Then. We might want another Trike Gang unit. And uh, maybe a Hub Goblin unit. Maybe we won't go for them now. We have not enough money, I believe. I think we will go bankrupt. So we want to move these armies to this arm under. General <coughs> Gag Sprocket Sprocket Spring will be moved towards the Karaji front. This General Travel Gas Backshot will also be moved. And uh, this General Vex Spindle Iron Gut will be moved as well. We leave only one rebel unit in each of the settlements here. Have a look. Ratchet and uh, Mud Sprocket and we we'll leave the, uh, move the armies. They need to move through these areas, the barrens, I believe, and enter these areas. And then they will need to move through these rebel areas here and all the uh, former Night Elven areas. And then they will move into the Silty Desert, and fight the Karaji. So we want to those three armies to be attacking the Kiraji before the Kiraji can build up themselves. We will break the siege. Yes. There we can well, leave. We shall at first light. Right. Orders, so we could move a bit with this army. We have our ally the Horde here. With Gromash Hellscream of uh, Warzone Clan or Grom Hellscream. Enemy troops, they have hired highwaymen here too. There are human bandits somewhere in these areas available to be hired. Okay, we will just end the turn. We have a lot of troops to spend. So we need to move any spare troops to the Kiraji Desert. Fuck the Kiraji, I mean the Kiraji Trolls decided to sell out already. They are uh, still very strong. We have the option we can fight the battle. We have um, balance of power, on the strength ratio 9-7 in our favor. We lost the battle when we attacked the, the, the city, but the difference with that battle is that they were protected by the walls. Now they will move out of the city so we can use our guns more effectively. We have a lot of guns. And our ally will also be available in the battle. We might actually want to fight them. They do not have any cavalry there except the scorpion. I think we will fight the battle and uh, yeah, we will. Uh, because they are selling out, we won't get the deployment phase. I won't be able to control the general most likely. <coughs> Unless I start the tool here. I will try that, but, but in a second, but. Uh, we need to be very fast and uh, <coughs> and uh, make sure that the gunners and the sappers will fire at the enemy. It seems the enemy is attacking the smaller army. So we have a lot of pirate musketeers and tail gunners, but they have no sappers. They also have the elite units. So we attack the army under <coughs> under uh, I believe Trade Prince Jaster. We need to keep him out of harm's way, we don't want him to die. I 
because he is the leader of the faction. If he dies, we will lose the game because I believe the air died in, in the in one of the other episodes. And we haven't gotten a new air, so if the leader dies, we lose. Even if you win the battle, we would lose. If the leader dies in the battle, then we would win the battle and then we would get the game over on the map. Okay, we will say the game here. Overwrite this save. Then I will tab out the CS. Alright. Come on, this arm in battle. Allow this arm to be controlled by the AI. Yeah, I think we will command the arm in battle. But we will have partial AI control, so we will be able to order the arm to be in aggressive stance, shoot out stance, or defensive stance. Okay, we will start the battle. We are not backed up by the other troops there that I wanted to add, but should be maybe one and a half armies. Gunners, we can make them shoot. For the AI army will be a battlefield that won't flicker or lag. Oh, we do. We have the worst weather, of course. Too bad. We are not controlling the general. That sucks. The tool kind of works halfway. We can zoom in on the units and such and slow down the game. It's in slow motion now, which is good. They will sally out. We need to be prepared for them. So we have uh, unique uh, like Warhammer rams and towers for the, for the orcs and goblins, but the remade to fit. Warcraft better. We have removed some of the parts that were Warhammer specific. They look more neutral, but you can still see that they are Warhammer with the horns. I mean, the, yeah, the horns. There. Okay, anyway, we'll group our range units. The Pirate Musketeers. We we'll lose formation. Fire to wheel. And then we will of course remove the ram and the siege towers from the units. So don't want them to be using that. We will group the tail gunners too of the goblins. We will have loose formation. Fire to wheel on. We have the artificers, they will have loose formation. Fire to wheel on. First wheel we're already enabled. Okay, um, I don't know where they are. They are over there. Okay, I think... We'll move them up here. The pirate musketeers. The tail gunners. Should also be moved. Right, and then the infantry place in one group. And uh, being, I guess, one line here. Guard mode. AI control. Be prepared to attack. We'll have the rockets or the goblin rockets in loose formation and circle and shoot will be on. We will start to harass the enemy with the rockets. Allied army will be in shootout stance. <coughs> it's good that the game slows down when we zoom out the third person view. Now they need to circle around it and fire the enemy. Ah! 
it intended to do. Goblin rockets will fire until they are out of ammunition, then we'll just retreat with them. They are not good in melee. They're only good at harassing troops. They are very fast. You can easily fly away from the enemy before they can reach goblin rockets. I guess we will just retreat with them. Right. Our leader is over there. I guess he can also retreat. Before the enemy berserkers or something come for him. We will place shredders under AI control. Everyone else will fire. We will retreat with the general. Can't use the bodyguard because the general is likely to be killed. That's the fucking leader. If he dies, the campaign is over. The course of this battle changes because defeat seems almost Sucks to add sunlight in the battle. That's why it lags. This sunlight is not <coughs> good because of that reason. Because this lag. Usually in medieval two modes, I have no lag. But, uh, it's a very clear light. Some reason that causes issues might be the shadows, something in this light. I don't know. I guess we we'll lose all the infantry, but that's fine. We're mostly the sake, sake goblin rabble. First and more to zoom in on the enemy general there. there. That happens sometimes when using it. It's about a ranged units are they firing? They are not for some reason. Seers are firing. They, they were attacked by the Rocky Shadow Blades. Not good. I wanted them to fire and they will retreat. They are too valuable. Better use this defensive troops. Rabble has already been killed or broken. This time our gunners managed to at least fire at the enemy. Some of them have been reached because uh, we didn't have a lot of good infantry here to protect them. So similarly to the Labrina campaign you want to have infantry in between them and, uh, and the enemy infantry so they can fire at the enemy. But unfortunately in this battle we had only the worst unit, the Rabble protect them and they've already been killed. We also had a, an elite of Goblin Shredder mech unit but it's also been defeated by the blood drinkers. You can see their bodies here. 
did a good job, but they're too few. They have an allied army, so it also has a bunch of different units that uh, are still to enter the fray. You can see that enemy has sent two units their way. The enemy is also throwing axes at, at us. Lord, only half our force we have the blood drinkers here, they're berserkers. They're really dangerous. We will probably lose this entire army. Even if they did more damage to the enemy this time. This was the worst goblin army anyway. So I, I am fine with this army being spent. It has some good ranged units and shredders and such, but managed to retreat with the goblin rockets and with the general and with the remnants of the artificers. Only the shredder was lost out of the elite units. They didn't have the bikes, I believe they are in, in the army that are not part of the battle. We can still reinforce the army with those troops later if we win the battle, but it's likely that the enemy will defeat this army. The one with all the mercenary pirate musketeers and such. At least they could use their guns this time. Now the Blood drinkers are charging these pirate musketeers. They will probably break. They are also being fired at by the axe throwers. And killed by the Faraki Shadow Blade rogue blades rogues. Uh, Faraki Shadow Blade rogues. Even so they did a much better job this time. And the good thing is that we spent the worst army first. They do, do not have to worry about losing the better army. Sure, they had some elite troops that were better than in the other army, but this army also had some elites. They had uh, two units of uh, Death Stealers, Goblin Death Stealers, these guys. Mixed Gander unit, one of two Goblins have, that are Goblins. Alright, they also have some units that are Mixed Ganders. Bandits and bandit raiders. Okay, so the goblin raiders are doing fine. They will kill off the, the trolls there, the troll spearmen. Okay, here comes another unit of pirate musketeers. We have the sappers. I'm a bit worried they, they will enter melee as they're controlled by the AI now. We have the heavy infantry of the goblins, they are medium infantry. Heavy infantry, but they are medium troops. The Goblin Infantry is not the best infantry. They, they let some of the units stay with the rams and the siege towers for some reason. <coughs> Only okay. intervention by the Almighty Lord or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. Yeah, we will still win here. I don't know where the rest of the army is. We have two units oh, here. Day. Our army is running from the field. Lost entire army. Our men before all is lost. So they are fleeing now, leaving the battlefield. The Faraki army, remnants of the Faraki army, will not turn around and face the other goblin army. That's fine. I can see the, the, the Death Stealers feed the Sanctuary Nomad Spearman. Had one unit here. We have the Musketeers. We have the Sappers. We lost a few of the Death Stealers in the battle. And we have the Heavy Infantry, Goblin Infantry. These units seem to be stuck. Here we have two units of Goblin Infantry. Didn't enter the, the battlefield. But I don't know where the rest of their army is. Ah, here. We have enemy troops here. And our troops. Here we have the hub goblins. Our army Second general. He might be killed. But he's not the leader. But we won't lose the game if he dies. It still sucks if we lose a general. 
that will probably happen then we have the tail gunners they had a lot of tail gunners and pirate musketeers here too we are moving the ram so they are planning to attack the walls too we have the sappers they are dragging that ram so the ram and the siege towers in here is fair with the dark horde and the horde and are from warhammer beginning of the end times called warhammer beginning of the end times uh, but edited so we have removed certain warhammer uh, assets uh, so to make them look more neutral but it's still a warhammer ram and a warhammer siege tower fit the orcs the goblins <coughs> pretty well so this is the larger force goblins we have a lot of brusiers I believe 4 units of brusiers 4 units of goblin infantry the heavy infantry and uh, countess medium troops and we have uh, at least 5 units of tail gunners and 4 units of like pirate musketeers at least 1 unit of Hub goblins, which is the bodyguard of the generals. The general should be here somewhere. Might actually die. It's the same general that we controlled in the previous episode where I fought the Battle of Sulfurak that he had to retcon as we lost and then we lost the campaign too. Here is the general. That's the general that we controlled in the previous episode. The one that was killed by the berserkers, the blood blood drinkers of the Fraki. Trolls. He will probably die again here. I don't remember his name. Rastun, probably. Seems to be surrounded by the trolls. Yeah, I would be surprised, surprised if he survived. He died. Well, that's what happens when generals are controlled by the AI. We need the adopted generals to replace the air and maybe to get the new air and, and also to replace this guy. We want generals, we can control them in third person. We do not want the leader to die, so we will keep him in undermine. That means our generals won't have trades, which will give uh, enemy generals benefits, because all the starting generals of the game have trades. None of the adopted generals have it due to the bug with trades. So our generals will be worse because they won't have any trades. We have another unit of death stealers. Okay, so they sent forth some of the troops, but not all of them. I believe when some of them have been defeated, they will send new ones. Now they let the death stealer unit here take care of the trolls the spearmen the trolls we can't zoom in on allied troops either they are not controlled by us directly they are in shoot at stance meaning they should spend their ranged attacks first if they have ranged attacks we have a tinker unit here, another elite unit a unit comprised of the same type of model that is used by the generals trade coalition they are not enough in numbers to be um, very effective but they are still good in their stats I think they will lose due to their low numbers against those trolls they have the enchanted to give warriors Trolls, they never break. They're hunting some of the pirate musketeers here for ally. Right, 55% kill of the enemy, 53% kill of our troops, killed our entire army, 3% of the second army has been killed. I believe we could win this battle. We did way better against the enemy, thanks to our gunners actually firing this time. But I don't know about our ally, if they are actually going to fire or if they will use range units in melee, we'll see. They did well with the hub goblins and the death stealers here, they've killed quite a few trolls. <coughs> Uh, 
Yeah, we might take the city, the capital of the Farrakh, and kill off the faction. We only have one starting area, Sulfarak. If we take the city, <coughs> they will probably be defeated. And we will be able to take it if we kill off the army here, outside of their city. This will give us the maximum level of city here too. Then we just need to build the right buildings and we can get the best troops. Better troops than in Undermine, because it's the final level of a settlement. You can get the elite troops from there. But I believe that <coughs> the giant unit there, the, <coughs> the colossal war forms of the goblins, they might only be available from goblin cities if they are huge cities or citadels. So we might not be able to get that unit <coughs> from a Faraki huge city because they need to be goblin cities to get it. I limited all the giants like that because I didn't want the AI to spam giants everywhere. So they are only available from, from the faction that has them. So for example the starting areas of the of the goblins of the trade coalition. <coughs> So we might not be able to get the Giants from Sulfurak. Now they are fighting the Blood Drinkers. They probably will be killed because they are real good. They are Berserk and Heroic. It's likely we will lose the Death Stealers to the Blood Drinkers here. The, the Berserk uh, mental state it makes the unit heroic and uh, <coughs> it boosts their stats a lot. They kill the Death Stealers. Fuck, they use the Tail Gunners in melee. They click on Shootout Stance again to try and change the AI behavior. wanted to, to use their guns from a distance. If I had controlled both armies myself I could have made sure they used them effectively but then they would have replaced the uh, only, only one army would be controlled at a time and then it would uh, add <coughs> replacements for each unit that is destroyed or, or that, uh, that has left the battlefield. Just like in the previous uh, battle, Sulfurak. I felt it would be better to have um, both armies fight at once and have them on partial manual control so they can place them in shootout stands so they will use their guns but for some reason that unit ended up not using their guns and this one seems to do the same mistake move too close to the enemy so AI army might actually be Misusing their ranged troops. That sucks. If that's the case. So I wanted them to use their guns in the battle. The trolls are using their axes. Of course the, they were charged now, they have no choice but to fight in melee. But all the others are also just walking too close to the enemy. Yeah, we didn't control the right army I think. These guys are very very OP, they easily killed all the tail gunners. The heroic trait of the berserk mental state makes them really strong. So they haven't even fired. AI yeah, did a very very bad job here. The army that I controlled did the best it could, but AI yeah, I can't say the same. Only half the They're placed in shoot that stands but are for some reason not using it. We'll all be killed in melee I guess. We have some good infantry tower. We'll see. We 
might lose the battle because of the gunners and their stupid behavior. Circus as if we had used the gunners. Gunners and the sappers would have been perfect to kill them, like we did in the previous video. For some reason the trolls are using their ranged units while the goblins are not doing it. Looks like they will still lose this battle, they didn't have the numbers to win against the death dealers here. Still killed like half the unit or more yeah they are really powerful now they have like one guy or two no they have like f four guys to roll around with the swing of the sword but for some reason I'm not doing that in Medieval 2 so. I believe Medieval 2 would lack the animations for the Berserk and the Mental State and would crash the Medieval 2 to the War Engine Oral Project tool fixed the issue with the crash by adding a, an animation that worked but the, the, it still looks kind of glitched compared to in Room to the War so while it doesn't crash anymore doesn't look right. Looks glitched. Only one berserker left, or blood drinker, to frack trolls. Dueling this female death dealer. Many death dealers to have only eight remaining. To kill them, good. There are very few remaining now. A lot of infantry though. They could still win the battle if you're lucky, but they have the frag champions here. It's not the bodyguard, but their bodyguard is a similar unit. But it would say frag champions, bodyguard, leaders. The, the bodyguard is slightly better, I believe. Might have fewer numbers, but better stats or so. Brusseers are fighting their champions. <coughs> I don't like how they used the tail gunners in this battle. All of them were wasted in melee. That's why we might lose the battle. Because the AI didn't do what I had planned and used their guns effectively on the battlefield. Sometimes the AI can do that and placed in shootout stands, but for some reason they decided to not use their guns. <coughs> so if we lose the battle, we could count it as a defeat, but we could also try to play it again and uh, just let the AI be... Uh, the, the AI armor be controlled by the AI without having any option to place it under shootout stands, then they might use the gunners more effectively, I don't know. We'll save after the battle no matter what, we, we might restart the battle and see if that would make them behave better. I would use my, the, the, the army that I control the same way I did, but the AI army, we would see if they acted the same way or if they were doing something different. We will see, because I wanted to win the battle, we will try it again, and if they fuck up again, We'll just <coughs> accept that result.
<coughs> yeah, these tail gunners are almost killed. Just attack, Jesus Christ. I think everyone should attack. Including the death stealers. They're just standing there. Nothing. We are fighting the Brusseers here. At least they are suited for infantry fighting. Same with the Goblin infantry here. There more than one unit there. Goblins seem to be losing, I think. Especially since they are sending in their track champions and the Tiki warriors that fight to the death. I believe the infantry can't win on their own. If the gunners had used their guns, we would have been able to win. But because they fought in melee, I suspect we will have another defeat. The first army still managed to decimate quite a bit with the gunners. But this army underperformed. Charging the death stealers now. They are too few to win. They lost too, ma lost too many to the blood drinkers. Save me! We can only vow to atone for this defeat by crushing our enemy the battle. next time. Average defeat. Trade Prince Yaster had 1990 go uh, goblins. Lost 1795. We have 195 that fled the battle, including the bodyguard and lead the goblin rockets. Enemies killed 921. So we killed fewer than we lost. Still did a pretty good job with Trade Prince Rast Yaster, he had the worst army. Then Mughal Rastunk had 2414 goblins. Lost, I believe, uh, 1785. It's almost as many we lost there. He has 629 remaining. We, we restored more of the battle there. More of them managed to flee, I guess. He killed 1500. They did a way better job at killing the enemy. They had way better infantry troops than, than the other armies that mostly had. Rabble only had one good infantry unit, uh, the Shredders. Okay, the enemy army under Chief Ukers, the leader of the Frack Trolls, or Desert Trolls, they had 3021 Trolls, lost 2086, and have 915 remaining. And they killed 3148. Actually, we, we lost the battle, but we did quite well, I think. Um, the only thing I didn't like was that the AI army, our ally, didn't use the gunners properly. They used them in melee instead of from a distance. But if I replay the battle and let them be totally under AI control without the options in this corner, 
uh, being available then uh, they might still just act the same way but we could try it uh, if they act the same way we will just exit and load save that they will make after this battle uh, but we'll try it because if they use the gunners in a in a more effective way they might win the battle I think the gunners are the the, the decisive factor if, if they use their guns we will win they do not use their guns, we lose. And it's not enough that the gunners of the first army use the guns. We need both armies to use their guns. If only one army does it, then then we will still lose. Okay, we'll, we lost, se we killed seventy percent and lost eighty one percent in this battle. And we lost one general. The Mughal Rastung died because the, the, the leader of the faction, trade, trade prince Jaster, managed to survive so, so they, we won't lose the campaign at least okay, casualties inflicted <coughs> <coughs> yeah, pirate musketeers killed 42 goblin rebel killed uh, 15, 34 one of them killed 30, that's pretty good uh, for a rebel unit and then we had a goblin trail gunner unit that killed 70 they did very well the pirate musketeer unit killed 54 another one killed 65 one killed 31 that's a bit low and one killed I believe 75 that's also a bit low and well rebel unit killed 8 till gunners killed 57 and 56 and 100 100 is actually decent uh, Goblin Rabble killed 5 Shredders killed 23, that's pretty bad for the Shredders I guess but they fought the, the Blood Drinkers so if, if they killed 23 Blood Drinkers that's pretty good uh, Goblin Artificers 253 were killed of the enemies, they did a really good job they killed more than any other units, so the Artificers are, are the best unit there and, and the Tail Gunners uh, did a good job too uh, Goblin Rockets killed 13, they, they underperformed, they didn't have enough ammo I think the Goblin Rockets need more ammo to be of any use in the game because they suck in melee and they have too uh, little uh, ammunition I believe They're, they run short on ammunition too soon so they can't really do much in the battle they can kill 13 enemies and then have no more ammo Okay, second arm under Mughal Rastunk the general of the goblins that died the trade collision um, they did better than the first army but they had better troops too for the most part they didn't have elite troops but they had mo many more medium troops had, had no sucky rebel troops ok the hub goblins bodyguard killed 245 of the enemy they did very well still were defeated the stealer unit killed 45 Seer killed 59, 49 and 89 Goblin Infantry killed uh, Seer, one of them killed Zero, that's really bad <coughs> Another one killed 29 Another one killed Zero I guess the ones that killed Zero must have been the ones with the Siege Towers or something I guess they have no casualties either so I guess they, they never really entered the I think two of the Goblin Infantry units weren't in the battle, they were stuck on the way into the battlefield I believe they are in the corner somewhere the siege towers yeah they, they can't have not entered haven't entered the area of the battlefield they didn't really partake in the battle because some of the troops are outside, they are too numerous, they bugged out didn't enter, didn't kill anyone, and they didn't lose anyone. Okay. Uh, and then the Tinkers, they killed 144 of the enemy, that's pretty good. And the Tail Gun unit killed 133, that's good. 44, Bombard killed 59 of the enemy, that's good too. Sappers killed 23, and another one killed 0. Okay. A Death Stealer unit killed 371, that's very good. The Goblin Infantry unit killed 174, so the most effective unit in this second army other than the bodyguard was the Death Stealers, it's the best unit actually, and then the Goblin Infantry. Ok, 
Okay, the Tinkers. Tinkers are actually decent. Okay, we will uh, return to the map. We'll pause the recording here. We are beaten. All right. Yes, lost the battle. They didn't lose the game. As the leader survived. Trade Prince Jaster survived. <coughs> Right, candidate for adoption. Yeah, we need a new general. Yes. He's a family member. I think family members will automatically replace a um, leader if he dies. I don't think they need to be candidates. Uh, I think they automatically will replace Trade Prince Jaster if he dies, but we won't even risk it. Okay, uh, prisoners executed in Faraki. Okay, end of turn report. Scourge is now the militarily strongest faction in the game. It might have been already. Burning Legion has the best financial situation. The Scourge, which is also the under, uh, one of the under factions, the only one in this campaign at in the beginning of the campaign. I believe the Forsaken can spawn, but the, the Scourge is, is uh, in the campaign from the start. They're the only ones that are playable in this campaign. Uh, they have the best production, the largest production, and then they, they have strongest faction and uh, the alliance loader on is the, the, the largest population okay. uh, faction announcements okay. construction report and recruitment report uh, new goblin infantry in ratchet gadgetsan and mud's pocket and in Everlook we have goblin rabble okay we will march these troops Board has already taken over Splinter Tree, which was held by Felwork Rebels in the beginning of the campaign. It's now held by the Horde. We'll just pass them by. This army can continue. to send this goblin infantry off to the army. Okay, here we have another general. They want to move. They move over there. It'll take a while to move on land. It might have been faster to use the fleet actually. Use the fleet here, or the army here, and then move this way to the Kiraji lands. Might have been faster. We've done the same from Ratchet. We've taken half the fleet to Madsbrook and another half to Ratchet. However, we can't use a fleet here because there is no area where we can. Board, except this area, maybe would need to move this goblin here somewhere and board the fleet. I guess this one will be forced to walk no matter what, but these guys probably could have boarded the, boarded the ships. I think we might actually go back with them, let them board the ships there. These troops will also retreat back to Gadgetsan. Match the troops here. Leave the fort. Yes. Orders. Yes. All right. Don't need rabble in the army. Nine sappers. Don't need the uh, red musketeers. If they were pretty spent anyway. We'll merge the troops. And we can re-add the pirate musketeers there. The rabble. We use the one that has 150. No. We'll waste the others. The weakest one will be used. Okay, we have 
bombards. We had three bombards already in that army. Keep the bombards over there. I think the leader of the faction needs to go towards the ships. Yeah. Okay, and then fleet. We'll have a fourth of the fleet ready for the leader. Then the rest of the fleet will move over here. They can prepare here for the army when it arrives. We'll also divide the fleet to 15 units. Yes, my Six, seven. Okay, I guess that's good enough. Two fleets here. We will use to board with these armies here. This one will have to march quite a bit. We have a diplomat that we can move to. We'll move the diplomat. <coughs> a lot of merchants, we do not need to move them. So we can move back this army. Yeah, I get Sam. They couldn't move this turn. We'll end the turn. I guess we'll continue the campaign. We lost the Battle of Sulfurak. I believe we replayed it and let the, the Bublin army, the second army, be entirely controlled by the AI. They might just do the same shit again. But if we're lucky, they will do a better job. The general in Undermine. He's stuck there, so not much, not of much use to us right now. We have another general here, which is very good. Move back with the army. Move out the general. Leave the bombards there. This army. I still think they should continue the war. Move, Move into the fort. Maybe we get to defend. We'll see. Okay, Mats Procure, they have a palisade. I don't know about the fort. They also had a palisade or a wooden wall. Anyway, we will defend the fort. Okay. Construction report, we have a dockyard and undermine. New air to the faction. One of the adopted generals, most likely. Okay, and we can build new buildings. Upgrade armor and undermine so our troops will be better. In the other areas, we'll see what we can do. Travelers Lodge, public order, proof farms and production, and lost trigger co. I will do that. No, we want troops there, we'll go for training grounds. Bay or in the Eastern Kingdoms. We have the castle from a large town. No, we won't, we won't do that. Okay, we'll go for the fighting grounds. We can recruit troops. And the leather tenier in Venture. No, we don't need buildings in Venture Bay. 
Nordrin. Right, to be ready. Move back this force. Move this army there too. Can hire troops here. Can hire humans. I think we'll go for a cavalry unit and a bandit unit. And here we'll go for red musketeers. Hire the rest of the marks too, I think. Go back to the general. So we got some humans, the highwaymen. With seven missile attack, three melee attack, and six total defense. Not very good. They are effective against armor, they penetrate armor with their bows, they are good archers, good human archers, they are mercenaries for any faction in this area, and uh, then we got the pirate musketeers, they are also mercenaries here, I don't believe that the highwaymen were supposed to be goblin units, they will probably stay mercenaries and rebels, however the other units are supposed to be goblin units. They are probably available from certain settlements here too. If held by the goblins. Bandits and the uh, bandit traders and the uh, pet musketeers, they are goblin units. Should be in the trade coalition army. Um, so yeah, will be more common in the next version. While the highwaymen will probably remain mercenaries. I don't believe they were supposed to be in the Goblin Army. I will check their roster in custom battle, but I don't think the Goblins had the Highwaymen. Could be wrong. I think they are unique for the minor factions. Okay, they also had the other army, and that this unit needed to be moved to. And this army could probably move him over here. We will continue to move in it into the barons here. Do have high overlord where the horde? Okay. We can move the diplomats, we'll do that. Check recruitment and construction too. Okay, Venture Bay. We'll end the turn. Our ally, the Horde, is moving troops into the area of Splinter Tree from the Barrens. Another general doesn't hurt to have a lot of family members. Diplomatic information: the following factions are now at war with each other: Kingdom of Stromgard and the Amani Trolls. And the knight, uh, the following factions have uh, clad a truce: the Knight Elves and the Horde. Okay, so they are no longer at war. We have new rebels or retrained rebels in some areas. Locations. Okay. Uh, so we can move our. Ready to train. Believe we had already moved the general. Ready to your orders, number one. Trade prince, yes. I don't know why he moved over here. Move him this way. We shall continue at Might have done a wrong decision previously. I don't didn't remember that I moved him. Okay, he will move towards the ships. He's the leader. There is the diplomat over here. On the Naturally, my lord. Yes, your orders, noble one. Voting at once, noble lord. Your orders, noble one. Voting Ooh, the at troops. once, Yes. Move out. 
So we will be moved to. Here we have the crossroads held by the horde. We have the general cairn of Bloodhoof here. Some troops, orc spearmen, orc peons, grunts, orc peons, grunts, spearmen, and blade masters. These are the, the unit info pictures out of the Dark Horde, Horde faction. Not of the Horde, but the Bleed of Fell Orcs and the Dark Horde have the same units. Even though the rebels are using the Fell Orcs, I believe that the Burning Legion has some of them too, but not all of them. Well, the Horde and the Dark Horde have all of the units, of course, just with different skins. The green ones are the Horde, and the, the grey ones are, are not like the, the Dark Horde. Here we have a Knight Elven Diplomat, Andrus Bladesinger. The new troops to send them to the army. Could send them this way. I think we'll move this army towards Ratchet. We shall continue at first light. Your order, your order, yes. Right. We've done the movements for this turn. Move these troops. Glimmering flats. Shimmering flats, actually. Move the family member too. Go back this army to put the bay. walls in Lost River Co. And in this area. Here we have uh, Motten Bailey. They also have wooden palisade problem. I don't know about the fort. I don't remember. Check the video later. Your orders? Your orders, number one. Check construction. Buildings. Okay, we can convert a wooden castle, get it sand. We don't want that. <coughs> so I think we can check Booty Bay by the way. We have a large force here. Might want to move it out. Leave one unit of rabble. Take the ogre areas in these areas. We can hire a unit of pirate musketeers too. We can hire quite a few of them here too. They are very common, these mercenaries. Okay, Dublin submarines do not have any unit info cards. using the rebel portrait too. All right. End the turn again. So the night elves might betray us, probably. Attacking ever look, let's see. Rebels attacked the unit over there. Captain Bork of the rebels with 176 ogres, I believe. They have ogre warriors and ogre bone crushers. So these ogres are used by the rebels. They are also used by the Dark Horde, the only faction that has them as units. The goblins have access to a different ogre called Hired Ogres. There are also mercenaries in the game. We will here we will uh, retreat. 
Uh, they will fight the bath and you, uh, lose a few troops. We will auto resolve it. I don't really care about one unit. Retreated towards our ally, Terramor. Another general, that's good. Some new troops, okay. Put Boot Bay first. Ah, there we have an area. We need to move all around. So I think we'll move back a unit of rabble to Boot Bay and move out this unit of Goblin Infantry instead. They are better. The Diplomat. Move these troops to Mad's Procket. Including the rabble. Our march will actually remove the rabble from the army. They're almost worthless. We'll move in the highwaymen and uh, three units of musketeers, pirate musketeers. They're more worthwhile in the army. Do better against the Kiraji. Right. Also move out these two troops. Move this armor too. Here's some more pirates. Move out this rebel unit. Only had one rebel unit. Could move out. Right, we'll move in a goblin infantry unit instead. Now they are more suited to fight. They have better troops. This unit will move towards Ratchet. It has been depleted. This unit can return to Ratchet. This one march there too. We can move out this unit in case they are attacked. Move them out, the army. We'll move to Ratchet and refill their troops. Get some more troops there. Actually, if we enter the Horde areas, we might get some troll archers. We might go there and grab some. Convert wooden castle, no. A spy. We need a spy. Yeah, it gets sand so we can spy on the trolls and the dragons and others. They won't be surprised. There are enemies there. Undermine. I think we can go for the upgrade armor. Bay Travelers Lodge. Ah, don't need that there. Lost Trigger Co. Convert Wooden Castle from a town. I think we'll upgrade the armor. Can get some troops here now. Recruit some goblin infantry there. Can also order ships. They, they're under the, the leader of the faction. Move him towards undermine. The 
these guys can move towards Primering Flats. Luciano can move towards Ghost Trigger Co. We don't want more than one general in each area. Move the pirates here for now. Next time they will board the ships there, we will end the turn now. They have al almost played for one and a half hours then I believe. We can get another general. Yield improvement. Undermine the Master Explorer Guild. The Master Explorer Guild has is always <coughs> Sorry, a master explorer skilled house is always headed by a truly well traveled scholar who has been enough, who has seen enough of the known world to be considered an authority on how to discover what lies beyond. He brings enough insight into a diversity of climates and how to best survive them to genuinely assist the way local military transits troops. We will of course build it and undermine, undermine. Diplomatic information. The following factions are now at war with each other. The Alliance Floater and the Under the Scourge. The following factions have declared a truce. Dark Iron Dwarves and the Casmodan Dwarves, the Evil Dwarves and the Good Dwarves pretty much. Relations improved. The Night Elves, we have good relations with them. Good. I don't want them to invade. They have new troops too. And Construction finished, the fighting grounds, Booty Bay, can recruit troops there, but only the basic troops. Okay, two generals, I will move one out for sure. And we have a new air, <coughs> big goblin of the trade coalition, that's the air. Okay, we'll move the leader, but uh, this area is never attacked. We don't need both of them here, but I think we'll rather waste the, the air over the, the leader. Yes. There, there is a risk that they might die due to another cause, like illness or uh, a disaster or something. I don't know if that happens, uh, but uh, it's uh, probably best just keep the general and the air in undermine and use other generals to attack. We have Farak diplomats. So I haven't really remade the strat models for the frack, but they had pretty good strat models. I'd rather re remake some of the guy and troll strat models that do not have proper models. Okay, move this general into Lost Trigger Co. So I need one army to defend these areas from the frack trolls. As we fail to defeat them. Couldn't move the fleet much, but enough to be able to move a little bit at least. This army too could be moved. They can't board this this time. Okay, we'll move the fleet back there. You can move in here. Okay, we'll move this army. Ah, we have an entire army in Ratchet now. Could just keep them there. Yes. And uh, yes, move four trips to Ratchet. Breaking away from the fleet. First, your orders, number one. Okay. Order. We rather want some of the troops here. We have two goblin infantry troops. 106 and 225. They are still better than the rabble. We'll 
leave two units of rebel here. Can't move this time, we'll move them the next time. Forgot about the trolls. Can't move anymore this time. Okay. I'm moving boot to pay. Your orders, noble one. Yes. Could attack the trolls, but they are neutral. A unit of disciples of Hakar, they're be one of their best units and so thank god. Also an elite unit. They have a general, Sansil of Gurbash tribe, the bodyguard of disciples of Hakar. The disciples are their bodyguard too. Similar to the similar to the um, I believe um, Faraki champions, they have both a bodyguard unit and a normal oh, unit. Normal but it's the same unit pretty much. Can move uh, down here then. But I think they have we need to attack the Faraki the, the, the Gurbash trolls at some point. Could try to use past the area. So we want to take rebel areas like this. Missia. Mountain Bailey. Augers, we'll get Augers from there. Move this unit over here. And we have another troll area here. General Bloodlord. Mandok here of Gurbash tribe. Faction leader. He also has that bodyguard, okay. We have a village. And here we have a village too. We can take the areas without problems, but we, if we declare war on them, we might send huge armies our way. It could be dangerous. This unit is not good enough to take the area. But I think this army would be able to take this area for sure. Then we might end up in a war with a strong enemy. I am willing, but not able, Lord. Your orders, number one. Need to somehow go willing, around a bit at the clear war. Okay. Check construction and such. Okay. In Uti Bay. Upgrade armor, we'll do that. Need better armor. Undermine. Get some good troops. I don't want to recruit too many before we've spent the sucky troops. We'll go bankrupt probably. So let's end it. Huh. Troll sent a diplomat to get get Zan. We would ask you want to a ceasefire? It's fine, we want ceasefire too. You have another Let's have a trade rights and map information. I've they accept no it. Nice. So we got the Faraki map information and we got trade rights. And we have peace. But we are not allied. This is a <coughs> We'll move Trade Prince Yaster to undermine, we couldn't reach it this time. Dramatic information, the following factions are now at war with each other. The Kingdom of Quel'Thalas, the High Elves, and the Amani Trolls, the Forest Trolls. The following factions have declared a truce, the Frag Trolls, the Death Trolls, and Trade Coalition of the Goblins. <coughs> and their allies, Recruitment Report, we have New Rabble, Goblin Brasiers, and they might be used to retrain. Construction complete are at Leather Tenere and Lost Rigger Co. So our troops will have better armor there now. And then the faction re end of town report. Okay. Go for improved farms in Lost Rigger Co. We want to upgrade the area as soon as possible from a town into a large town. It's not even a large town like Boot Bay. Okay, Boot Bay on the other hand. Can't do much there. We'll just leave it as it is. We could move uh, two units of bombards towards Shim Shimmering Flats. And recruit a unit of Dublin Infantry there. Board of 
fleet to this army. I will move the fleet here. Go fast and I will move towards the Kiraji. So the trade coalition, they are at war with Kiraji only. Because they have peace with the frag trolls. He'll try to kill off the Kiraji. He sent three armies there. <coughs> would of course send these armies to the frag trolls. An army. Including human mercenaries. Okay. Frag trolls. Right, but I think the Kradi are more of a threat. As they will be very very numerous in the late game. And they do have really dangerous mages too. It's more important to kill them off early, before they become too strong, they get very good cavalry too. The late game. Could board the ship now, or could go back here and get the troll. Higher trolls. I think we'll board the ship actually. We'll skip the two rebel units. The rest will board. Board of an arm here. Crack Terror Frost, Frostwolf Clan. These are the trolls we could have hired. They are decent. They do not have armor penetration. Add the goblin infantry to the fleet yes, later. Someone to see. You have an area. Free and held by Grim Totem. Grim Totem tor Torrents. Okay, Grim Totem Torrents. Okay. Uh, we will um, check Boot Bay too. Here have a huge Yurubashi army. It's not a bad army, they have some elites too. So I can't really move over there. I tried to move a rebel unit here. And we can move up, move up there, then we'll move here. It's a path to reach this area, which is very good. We want to take this area. The rebels can't pass this area without declaring war on the Gerbash. Okay, so we'll move back this unit towards Udi Bay. And this army unit could be moved back to here. We'll instead move in the Goblin Infantry. One unit of goblin infantry. There. Two rebel units will move back. Then we'll move out the Briseers. They will also join the army. Right. Yes. Strigger Kogar already. Constructing there. Booty Bay too. Right. Undermine. Do not want any new troops yet. We'll end the turn. General, they do not seem to cost anything. Okay, end of turn report. Rikil or Rikil has become the, the faction with the best financial situation in the world. Otherwise, it's the same as before. They've taken that uh, spot from the Burning Legion demons, I believe. But the Rikil or Rikil, they are the, the guy and Norsemen in Northrend. 
They are giants, but they are like Viking giants. Okay, construction complete. They have dragons, I mean drakes. Okay, and other stuff. Construction complete in Undermine. We have blacksmith constructed. Yeah, the goblin troops really need the best armor possible. For their troops, they are really bad. Their infantry, they need the best possible armor. Okay, we'll upgrade the armor into an armor. Uh, I mean, the blacksmith will be upgraded into an armor. So we'll get even better armor. The heavy splint armor. Alright. Move these troops now. Back to Boot Bay. We'll do that. We have a Gurbashi merchant. Okay, we'll move these units into the army. Move over this area. Could move over there too. They're supposed to be able to move. Over the river, I believe. Orders, Here's a one. mountain. Orders, I don't know why they one. can't. Orders. Move this unit out, maybe they can move the next one. We'll see. It's supposed to be a passage here and a passage here. Maybe they can only move from, from the other side. Into this area, I don't know. Your we wanted to attack this one. area without having to declare war on the Gerbash trolls. Still the sea, Stormwind and the Burning Legion demons. And the Relations Verse and the Ankerai, terrible. Yes, my lord. Not course now, my lord. Your orders. Move the fleet here. Full sail. Yes, my lord. Here we have Terramore. So both of these factions are allies. They are probably at war with each other. Board. Yeah, they are at war with Terramore. If they start at war, it doesn't affect the alliance. That's why they started al al allied with both. So they will be backed up by both factions in, in a battle against the rebels, or against a faction that all of them are at war with. And at the same time, yeah, the, the wars between Terramore and the Horde doesn't force the gob goblins into declaring war on any of them. We have the Terramore faction here. They have bow militia and they have Terramore golden pikes and some other units. By the way, I think I am on turn 8 or something with the Night Elven campaign. They want to send the Night Elves to Terramore to defend them against the Horde. Which is a neutral faction or an enemy. We are this area about to conquer an area from the rebels, from the Merlin rebels here in the Night Elven campaign. Then I wanted to take these areas from the Furbox. We'll probably do that still with Tyrande Whisperwind, the cool leader of the faction, and then the, f the female cool leader. And then, uh, I mean, her husband, uh, Malfurion, is the other leader. And then we'll use Scenarius, uh, one of the Keeper of the Grove Generals, to take this area, Arkran, from the Merlin rebel steer and the Sea Giant General. Uh, but after that, we'll send fleet to Terramore and aid them in the war against the Horde because we do not want, usually in this campaign, <coughs> the Terramore is always defeated by the Horde and Outer Resolves. Because their units are better than Outer Resolve. If they've fought the battle in real time, Terramore is more likely to do a good job. So we want to send an army to aid Terramore and. Uh, help them in the battle against the Horde to prevent them from being destroyed because I believe that in, in, on the battlefield they would do better than in Outer Resolve. So if we send a unit there we can initiate real-time battles uh, between them and the Horde so they do not waste their units in Outer Resolves. I don't know if they've lost a lot of armies already. They start with three generals I believe or four generals and have quite a few troops 
varied types like Gilnea's troops, Strom troops, goblins, dwarves, high elves, the only rangers of the high elves, and then they have their own human troops too, and some lord on troops. <clears throat> so yeah, we want to aid them, but in, in the battle here, in this campaign with goblins, we do not want to interrupt any war because we are allied to both. But with the Night Elves, Terramor is the only faction in Kalimdor. So we want Adam, Jaina Pradmore, the leader. See her here, she's the bodyguard of Mante Darts Magi. Also have the human footman and the human pikeman here. Okay, but in this campaign, the goblins are neutral. Allied to both the Horde and Terramor, so we won't join in, in their battles. Yes, we'll just pass by. <coughs> Maybe one of them will attack us in the later in the game, probably the Horde. Terramor will probably be killed off. But with the Night Elves, I want to prevent the Terramor from being killed off, if I can. They are the only ally of the Night Elves on, on, in Kalimdor. I mean, the Frag Trolls do not have any allies. Same with Ankarai. Insects. Burning Legion only has the Naga as the allies. In, in the Frozen Throne campaign. Otherwise, they are allied to the Scourge, I believe, the undead, but they are in Northrum, not in Kalimdor. Okay, so the Burning Legion do not have any allies. And the Horde, I believe, do not have any allies, but they have a lot of areas. Uh, in, in the Frozen Throne campaign. In, the, in this campaign, they will conquer a lot of areas and become strong. The Night Elves, they only have the, the Terramors and allies, but that's where we want to get them. Uh, if you do not count the, the, the goblins, they are supposed to be neutral to most factions, but uh, they, they are, are an ally. So that's the best way of keeping, keeping them neutral. Let's send these units to Shimmering Flats. We'll recruit another unit of Goblin Infantry. Embark. Allies declare war by the dark iron dwarves on Casmodan. The goblins, they belong to the Horde in uh, World of Warcraft and used to be allies to Dark Horde in Warcraft 2. And because of this, I believe that, that the goblins are more likely to side with dark iron dwarves that are allies to the Dark Horde. So we will actually agree with the Darker and Dwarves and ally with them. They are no longer allied to the Casmodan Dwarves, the good dwarves. They are allied to the Dark Iron Dwarves. We we'll move the Trade Prince Jaster to this area. We we'll move out some bodyguards, fleet, some troops, the mage, and we we'll move out. The rabble, we do not really need rabble anymore. Family member will be moved. Okay, and we can move the fleet. Okay, we can move this fleet. And leave one ship here. In case we want to move an army from Undermine later. Okay, war declared. The Dark Grand Dwarves and the Casmodan Dwarves. Okay, we can declare war on the good dwarves. We knew that. Recruitment report. Construction complete. The blacksmiths in Uta Bay. In Eastern Kingdoms. Mission fail. Take rebel settlement. Okay, Bramble Sky. Yeah, we didn't take it. Changed my mind. It's the area that we were besieging. Here, I had forgotten we had a mission to take it. This area, held by the Quilbor rebels. 
doesn't matter. Yes, Move this fleet now. Over there. Now, my lord. And then we will try to reinforce it. We want yes. the goblin infantry at least to join. Then we'll yes. continue our journey. Yes, my lord. Orders? This fleet will also Save. move. Yes. Plotting course now, my lord. The diplomat. We'll check the construction. Boot the bay. For the swine herder, will improve farms and food production. It will increase the population size in the town, in the large town. It will speed up the ability to convert it. Uh, we want to convert it, but large town or castle. I think we do not want a castle. We want to keep the Bay city type because they, it's a town, I believe. Lower. Don't move here for some reason. Very well. Need to move around. Okay. My lord, your honor, number one. We'll move back here. Yes. Yes. We seem to move back to Booty Bay. I think we'll need your to attack the trolls. God will be with us, men. To battle! Okay. Lost trigger code, we can go for another goblin infantry unit. Have a spy in Gadget Sun. We'll move out. The sapper spy. Spy on the frack trolls. Few troops here. They have the leader chief, of course, here. Some other troops. I think they moved most of the army. Maybe they went into the Unguro crater. They've taken this area. Unguro from Rebel Raptors. They've also taken this area. Gorish Hive from Rebel Raptors. They conquered the jungle. They seem to have taken this area too. From Rebel Night Elves. From the, I believe, they were held by a certain order, uh, mix between night elves and druids and orcs, orc shamans and, and night elven druids. I believe. You can see the other areas are there. So the Fraki conquered the Ungoro crater, and they've also taken the jungle and moved into the Sility Desert. Taken at least one area there. They have a large force here. Same army that spawned probably because they kept the army. The garrison script. Left a few units in the capital and went on a <coughs> conquest spree. Yes, right. End the turn again. Turn report, same as before. Construction complete. We have a pig. We have pig farms in Lost Trigger Co. It will increase production, food production. Okay, more new troops. Still, the seas, Kingdom of Stormguard and the Scourge. The undead. Okay, relations improve the Dark Horde. We have good relations because we choose their side in the war between them and Casmodon because they had made a truce and then they, they declared war again so we had to decide okay. 
this army can now uh, move over here. We can actually attack. I think we'll attack this time. Take this area from Sans of Gurubashi. War, trade collision and Gurubashi trolls. Yeah, we'll attack them. This force can move towards the other area. Recruit some troops too. Alright, merchant and the yeah, we will go for the troops there. Move around this desert here. Travelers Lodge, public order, go for it. Lost Rigger Co. Gad Gitsan, we do not need to do anything. Can move the spy, we'll do that. I want to check out this area. We have a great Faraki army, we have their Faraki Hydromancer Priest too. So I believe the Faraki are unlikely to get new strat models. They might get a few new ones. But uh, I believe the bigger trolls are more likely to get new ones. They use most of their skins. Here we have Lar, Lar of Sulfarak, family member. One of the adoptive generals, he doesn't have any traits. We have a huge Faraki army. They're moving back. Maybe they plan on attacking us. We have uh, an ogre area here somewhere too. They don't want to fight the ogres. They are not really yes, suited to yes. fight them yet. Yes, in Booty Bay we might be able to handle them. They are few in numbers. They have more numbers I believe in, in the desert here. In Dune Mall I believe. This is cool. Yes. Okay. Undermine. So we are not ready to recruit anything yet. Move the fleet. We have a mage unit and some generals here. Continue to move. I think we will attack the trolls here. They might have a garrison script too. No, they didn't. They didn't get any extra troops. Very good. Only they're important. Areas have the garrison script. Okay, so this village is not important. And now, if we attack their capital, they will get extra troops for sure. So, almost range ratio 3 1 in our favor. We'll fight the battle on the battle map. <coughs> yeah, we'll pause the recording here. Okay, now we'll start the battle. The battle seems to be right. in our favor. From such tidings does victory Wait a bit. Don't trust this weather. It's bright. This is better. Let's start. Okay. I'm not sure it's good. Might still be too bright. Sometimes good weather doesn't affect lag or flickering. Sometimes it does, like in the Battle of Sulfurak. This is also a siege battle, but we have a village here. The Gurubash trolls, they also have Aztec culture. They have the same buildings and such as the Faraki. They used blue instead. Very similar faction with different units. They have some basic units that are very similar. They're not the same. And then they have unique elites and medium troops. Still very similar troops. Okay. I would say the Gerbash is slightly better in terms of mages. Maybe not. They have about the same. Uh, 
think I could bash it and the track is very very even. Okay, uh, so against the trolls we need to defend from ranged attacks. We group all the goblin infantry units into one group and place them in shield wall formation. One line. And uh, we place them here. And we have the braziers. We don't have any special formations. We lose formation instead. Prevent the range units of the trolls from killing them from afar. Then we have the gunners, the tail gunners, the pirates. They can be one group. Lose formation. They will be leave behind the <coughs> the goblin infantry, so they can fire at the troops by while being protected. And we have the bombard. In loose formation, with normal ammo, and we'll let them fire at will because there are no walls here. They can just be allowed to terrorize the enemy. Then we have the general's bodyguard, he'll be behind the army. They have Goblin General, will take control of the general in battle. Uh, so we missed out on a unit of Brissiers, I see. Lose formation with them. One line. We have the Tinkers to the lead unit. They will be behind the general. Do not need to use them. They can be in loose formation to prevent the enemy from shooting at them. Then with the bodyguard. Then we have the Death Stealer Rogues. They can also be in loose formation. Right, we're done. Let's pause the recording here. Alright, I'm back. We are controlling the general. Alright, we're back. We are controlling the general. It worked. Alright, good. Let's start the battle. Pause the game. The enemy only had three units here, so we'll easily win. We had three elite units. We have the disciples of Hakar. 16 attack, 7 charge bonus, 19 defense. Two hit points, really good. With their bodyguard, they have some good abilities too at a glance. Then we have the ordinary disciple unit too. And we have the serpentine guard. At least the serpentine guard will fight to the death. Do not have any of our rabble. I sent them back to Boot Bay. So I guess instead we will, against their elite troops, I think we can send in elites. Such, but we will also send in gunners. We can let the bombard fire. So this is the general. Mm. I don't feel that the game is flickering now. So this sun is at the um, battlefield was much better. No lag. Only some of the sunny battlefields cause lag. I don't know why. Might be the shadows in the desert or something. In the desert. I don't know. The bomber has started to fire. They only have elite infantry in this uh, uh, army. Then our troops do not need to be in, in loose formation. I changed my mind. Place them in tight formation. Village do not have any walls either. We we'll place everyone in tight formation. Forgot that they didn't have any range units. Alright. We'll have to send in the Tinkers and other good troops here. We can start with sending our unit off. <coughs> Pirate musketeers to fire them to get them to move out. Settlement. We have an 87 of them, a unit. Yeah, this battlefield was much better than the previous one. Really good weather, but no flickering. Very good. No lag. 
pedig a two shoot and bag. But uh, that weather caused the lag, I believe. The light. Here well, it was no problem. Very beautiful terrain. One of the best to fight in. in this mod. This unit is really cool. It has mode and pirates and goblin pirates and dark iron dwarf pirates. So the dark iron dwarves declared war on the cast mode and dwarves so we had to choose a side. In the beginning of the campaign I believe they were already at war so we didn't need to choose a side but <coughs> we had to pick one side when, when they made a truce and then declared war again. That will also be the case if the war de uh, declares a truce uh, with uh, Terramore and then or, or the night elves and then de declare war later we need to pick a side. We'll take the evil faction's side as the goblins. So they join the horde in Warcraft 3. Our armies started far away before we took a like a rat that was far away. They, they moved around the settlement for some reason. Could fast forward the movement. a bit so these are mercenaries these guys that's why we sent them in first <coughs> despite them being better than the tail gunners they are not as numerous they have better stats and look more badass Closer. We'll also send in the Death Stealers. We can, could send in, I believe, two units of uh, these guys too. The Briseers. These guys could be placed over here. Hurry up. Send a horn to the general. We killed a few with the bombard. 8% dead of the enemy. Stop firing now. They don't fire on our troops. It has very bad accuracy. It can hit anywhere. You can also attack the pirate musketeers. Zoom in on the rogues, death stealers. Team 
Tinkers are in front. Sent in the leads because we wanted them to <laughs> do well against their leads. Leads versus elites. We only had two elite units. We do not count the bodyguard. Play the goblin praise the day before sunset, but our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. I believe I played World of Warcraft before they added the goblins and the pandas. <coughs> I used to play night elves and humans and then blood elves when Burning Crusade was released, but in the original original World of Warcraft classic I played as Night Elf Druid. It's a night elf druid. And as a human paladin, uh, I also had a Dwarven warrior and a gnome warlock. Then I got a Vladel female hunter, I believe, in Burning Crusade. I believe the goblins was added later. Never played as goblins. wasted our best troops here because they had so good troops at the plaza. It could be bad if we face a huge army later. If our good troops have been spent. So they will then have the upper hand in quality. And we will have mostly medium troops and none of the good stuff. <coughs> but those elite trolls would have been able to kill a lot of our medium troops. I wanted to have as few casualties as possible. That's why I sent in the Tinkers and the Death Dealers and two units of Briseers. The two units of Briseers were used to replace one elite unit. That's why I sent two of them. They weren't good enough to be one unit against the elite units. This bodyguard unit, the Disciples of Hakar. Hakar, by the way, is the god, the Gerbash trolls. Uh, so the Disciples, they are similar quality to the Frak champions. They're really good. Melee. What about our gunners? Are they firing? No, they are not. I actually want them to stand there, move there. The enemy are badly blooded. They have lost half their men. It's been on the Tinkers too. Unit of like engineers and goblins. Same unit as the general. Only 16 remaining now. Yeah, they're really cool robotic arms that they blessed. use in battle. The enemy general is dead. We have sent the idiot to hell. Yeah, I prefer the death stealers over the tinkers. hide anywhere. Unlike the Tinkers, I don't think they can do that. Okay, then we are fallen. Sansel of Gerbash tribes, they lost one of their custom generals. These guys firing. I want them to fire. Good. He fired. Serpentine guards, guards, serpentine guards. Yeah, the Brazilians fighting there. Guards over there. They rather zoom in on a different unit. They've killed all the 
best dealers and the tinkers now. That's not good. How is the battle looking? How is it going? Have they almost killed everyone? Yeah, they have the upper hand. They are only fighting our Briseers now. Send in the rest. This unit is now charging against. Charging against our gunners here. Killed quite a few there. Very good. Good job, pirates. Killed everyone but one. Didn't want them to charge the gunners. But we ran out of troops there. We send in all of them now. All the brassiers. Back the dwarves. It looks like the Brazilians here are losing. So these are the serpentine guards of the Gerbat trolls. They look kinda like Naga troops. They are not Naga. Their elites are better than ours. Their elite infantry. Slaughtered all of them. We have the help of two units of Brassiers. I think they will win against these two units, so we need to send in the rest of the Brassiers. Here they come! I still think we can win the battle. We killed 82% of the enemy and uh, lost 12%. Even if we lost like the 12 best percent of the Praise the saints! Our men have taken control of the city! Good. Gunners can start to fire again. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset. The but long range. Our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. We're still fighting their serpentine guards. Raki trolls, the death trolls, they were too strong at their capital, we couldn't defeat them. <coughs> so we had no choice but to leave them. We will attack them again later, we have better troops. And so. Kiradja, I think it's more important to kill off early. Smartest move <coughs> to leave the good troops here. <coughs> By the trolls to leave their lead troops alone like this. We'll win thanks to the numbers of our troops. We killed 90% of the enemy. Serpentine guards, they are similar to the Naga, but they are snakes. I can kill that one too. I 
Ghost of Car. That's very good. The Border Guard. The Serpentine Guards, they have giant swords. Goblins might lose Booty Bay. The bigger bunch of trolls might send in that huge army that we saw. If they do that, we will likely lose. Might win. We'll see. Need some reinforcements now. So we lost some troops in this battle. We'll try to hold Booty Bay. Take it later if you lose it. You won't attack their capital, the Gurbash capital, because they will spawn a lot of troops there. We will try to take all their small villages and defend against their large army. And take the Ogre. Mounds scattered in the area from the main factions of rebels. We will avoid the capital, we don't want them to spawn a huge army. Stormwind faction or the Kingdom of Stormwind, they, the humans, they might move into the jungle too and fight the Gurbashi on a different front. We are allied to them. We might be able to join forces with Stormwind against. Gurbash trolls. Seems we won the battle now. Have we kill that guy? I think we won. No, we have one guy there. Now we won, I think. All of Christendom will be awed by the victory we have won here today. We have soldiers. We didn't really get to control the general. We won anyway. Clear victory. So, Krinkel Noggenfogger of the Trade Coalition had 3467 goblins. Lost 487. So we lost about. Like. We lost didn't lose a lot. Okay, and then we had like... We lost a 7th uh, out of the total force. Yeah, 1 out of 7 units we lost. Okay, but we only fought 3 units of elite Gurbash troops. So. Okay, still lost a lot of, uh, against just 3 units. Uh, enemies killed. 303 Gerbash trolls, we took zero captive. Uh, all of them were killed. The enemy Sansil of Gerbash tro tribe, their general, he died. We had 303 Gerbash trolls or Yangil trolls. Uh, all of them were lost and they killed 544 troops, but we restored a few after the battle. They weren't really killed, they were. Some of them were hurt, probably. Like casualties sustained. And suffered yeah, uh, and healed and such. So some of the casualties were, were healed after the battle. Do I have the details? So casualties inflicted. Goblin tail gunners killed 13. Death stealers killed 64. Brazil unit killed 25. Another killed 33. Tail gunners killed 16, 26, 20, uh, bomber killed 25, so the tail gunners have a really long range. Didn't know that they were firing. Okay, and then we had uh, musketeers, they killed 28. And the drinkers, I don't know. They only killed 10. They re did really pull that. Yeah, so the tinkers weren't very good, but <coughs> the, t the 
this is very good. Okay, it's time to die. Map. Alright, so I played for about 1 hour 20 minutes now. 2 hours 20 minutes, I mean. Okay, we'll continue a little bit longer. Take this build and then we'll attack. Probably another something, we'll see. Try to move the fleet to the Karajar. And end it there. Try to take their capital or something. Or attack their armies on the field. So we took Sulmam, we'll let, let them have it there. Resistance is futile. And my armor rides a crinkle. Hold them for her. Okay. I think we've done the recruitment and construction already. Yeah. And move the troops. Yes. We just end the turn here. We're on turn 25 now. are also closer to us than the Kasmodan dwarves, so it made sense to take their side. New mission. <coughs> 15 turns remaining. We want us to take Missia, the ogre area here held by the minor factions. The ogre minor faction. We want to take it, but we also want to stop that Kurabashi army. We will move down here. Yes. Oh, they have a huge army there. Yes. Send another unit there immediately. The rebel will be sent to Sulamamba. This force will be sent over here. We only have a general here, Lallord Manduk here of Kurbashi. Send in these troops against him. They've taken this ogre area, we still want the area with a general the Noxist of Kurbashi tribe here. Just the same general as the other generals of the Kurbashi. Diplomatic information. All of the factions are now at war with each other. The Dark Iron Dwarves and the Kingdom of Stormwind. And uh, the following factions have declared a truce. The Alliance of Lordaeron and the Amani Forest Trolls. Allies declare war with Dark Iron on Stormwind. Stormwind is a faction that are the closest to us and they are likely to invade the jungle. I kind of want an alliance with them against Gurubash Trolls. We'll side with Stormwind actually. Alliance in Tatters, the Darker and Dwarves, that's fine. We need Stormwind. If they invade from this side, we can join up with them. We 
will increase our chances here. Survive. Right. Construction complete. Eva Swan here there. In Booty Bay. We have new troops. Okay. Let's attack this. Oh, maybe we have the upper hand. So the enemy is led by a captain. Then Masoga, they do not have a general. Which is very good. They are not backed up by the army in Morshog Ogre Grand. Grand. Morshog Ogre Mound, I mean. They have a good army, but no general. We have a general. We have Gerbash Jungle Stalkers. They do not have the ability to penetrate armors. They are not that good, but they are a unique archer unit of the Gerbash Trolls. They have troll archers. They are better, they can, uh, they can use flaming missiles. These guys can charge without orders, they are probably pretty good in melee. No, they are worse in melee than these guys. These have long range. These guys have excellent morale and can use flaming missiles. These can also use flaming missiles, excellent morale. Okay, yeah, you may charge it with orders, combat bonus and woods or snow. These also have combat bonus and woods or snow, but these have long range. The troll archers are better. They are a similar unit, like one of the Gurubashi archer units. But it's not the same. Then we have troll warriors. The Gurubashi. They are the same as the Amani warriors. The troll warriors and the Amani troll archers. They are shared with the Amani, these two, and very similar to the Faraki trolls, but they have different stats than the Faraki. Uh, well, the Gurbashi jungle stalkers are unique to the Gurbashi trolls, but they are not very good. <coughs> we have troll warriors, they are also shared with the Amani trolls, similar to the uh, Faraki ones. Not the same. They are Gurbashi primitives, they are unique to the <coughs> Gurbashi trolls, but they are probably their militia. It's not very good. They have good morale to them. And they have the Serpentine Guards, Elite Troops, that we just fought. 13 attack, 3 charge bonus, 13 defense, 3 hit points. They can swim over rivers, combat bonus in the woods or snow, excellent morale, very good stamina and elite unit. We have the Gurubashi Tribal Warriors, they are unique to the Gurubashi. <coughs> Mounted Troll Warriors, they have some Troll melee cavalry now. They will have the blue raptors seen on the sm small picture. The troll raptors here, they are Fred with Amani. Well, the troll tribal warriors and the Serpentine guards, they are unique for the Gurbashi. They also have mounted troll spears, Fred with Amani trolls. Very similar to the Faraki trolls uh, version of the unit. And then we have uh, Gurbashi primitives, that's the militia, we already checked them. Troll spears, Fred with Amani. Troll axe throwers, they are shared probably with Amani. Could be unique for the Gurbashi, I don't know. No, I think they are unique for the Gurbashi. The Amani trolls, they will have big trolls that throw, throw axes. But they are very similar to the Faraki axe throwers. But it's not the same unit. <coughs> okay, they have quite a few unique troops here, but mostly basic and medium troops. We we'll save the game for the battle. We'll fight this battle too. Balance of power, only strength ratio 5 3 in our favor. <coughs> so, this will be an interesting battle. A very even battle. Battlefield battle, we will be able to use our gunners properly. We know, uh, and we restored some of the death dealers here. <coughs> but we hardly have any cavalry. Hello, cavalry. So, they have a cavalry advantage. Okay, start deployment. Shut down that. Uh, the, the tool doesn't work now, we will pause. Alright, I'm back. We are controlling the general. And we want to be prepared for the actual battle. All the gunners will be placed in loose formation. And one group, they won't be AI controlled because the AI is so stupid. They will use them in melee. The 
unit of <coughs> of uh, goblin infantry. They will be in one for the line, shield wall formation. <coughs> and then we have the the crusaders. We'll add them to the same force together with the tinkers and the shadow. Uh, I mean the death stalkers. No. Death dealers of the goblins, yeah. There'll be one group and AI controlled actually. Then we have the bombard. They will be in loose formation, have fire normal ammo on, fire will on. Won't be AI controlled because they are ranged. AI is too stupid with ranged units. Use the minimal level, place it over here instead can easily fire. Okay, and then goblin leader, bodyguard we will place them behind the rest of the army. <coughs> okay, we're ready. Leave. Can place these in one line. I think the infantry front of the range units so, so that the range units are actually protected don't want the enemy to reach the range troops the general bodyguard could be probably in the middle here front of the gunners Okay, let's start the battle, pause the game. Here are the attackers, so we will have to click on the troops to attack. Okay, we're done. Let's start the battle. Telephone with the general. Wonderful weather again. Hopefully no flickering. General. Can run with the general. Oh, fuck this happened again, okay. Okay, we'll run with the general. Can't have him, have him walking. It'd be too dangerous. The gunners should start firing soon. Okay, the gunners. The reason we want to keep Buda Bay is because we get really good auger troops and troll troops in these areas that we want. We also get human areas in the Stormwind lands. So we want to keep these areas. Our infantry has reached the battle. Or so there, they can move there. The border guard. Over there. He joined the battle. If we remain true and all the general honor, back. Victory with the line of gunners. Cavalry can't just come from nowhere and kill him. Put the up, goblins. You need to fire. Here are the pirate musketeers. Firing too. At least the 
battle going. We have a unit of Crusaders fighting the trolls. Troll warriors there. Another unit here. You can see more up close the battle between the Briseers and the Troll Warriors. I believe their warriors are better than our Briseers. They have better defense for sure. We might have better attack, but I don't know. I think we are losing here. Okay. What about our lead unit? The Rogue. Only four of them remaining alive. The enemy has more elite troops. I think they have the upper hand with the infantry for sure. We might still have an advantage with the gunners there. They did have cavalry too, so you'll see. Killed a death dealer there. We only have one left now. He threw Serpentine guards. Serpentine guards. Kill that guy too. Need to keep an eye out for what is happening here. They have numerical advantage <coughs> and cavalry advantage and elite advantage. We have gunner advantage or range units advantage. We are defeating the infantry for sure. Briseis will be killed. Here we have a bombard. They are fighting the crew of the bombard. We had the bombard too close to the enemy. Kill the crew too. They are fighting these guys. They are in shield wall. But the, the goblin infantry managed to break the troll spears on this front. And the border guard is doing well too. Not totally lost here. I think the bodyguard needs to move back. The enemy are badly blooded. They have lost move them over there. The we'll move the general away from here. We are the board, uh, at, the, at the edge, at the front. We need to move him back. We don't want him to die. He's not the faction leader, so we won't lose the game if he dies, but Praise still don't want to him to Lord. die. Our men have slain the enemy general. He's one now of the important generals. Okay. See here, we killed the general of the enemy, it was a captain. Could still uh, affect their morale. They might break eat more easily now. The Briseers are still fighting there. The Amani smaller trolls and the Gurbashi smaller trolls are the same. Except the elite units, the unique ones. Well, the Faraki trolls are different. Smaller trolls that look different. That have similar stats and weapons and such. They used to have different armor. I believe they do not have the same helmets and such. They are not the same models look very similar. Might have slightly different gear. I believe they are more naked. They do not have as much armor. But the goblin infantry are moving here. They won. Unlike the other infantry. I'm disappointed that the bombard shouldn't have had it that close to the enemy. These Briseers will get massacred, they are surrounded, together with the crew. Our gunners did well. Okay, what about our hero? We'll move back. So this is a custom general. But uh, the Nogerfogger guy, Trinkel Nogerfogger, so he has traits. But any adopted general won't have it. Air and the leader are in undermine, they won't be moved out. Don't want to lose the campaign because the general died. Okay, the knight elves are more 
willing to take risks, same with Blood Elves and the Naga. To the Goblins, all the generals look the same in battle. There are no custom models. The Order Guard were most of it still standing. 73, I believe they were 76 or something in the beginning. Trolls have won over here. Actually, I think the Order Guard could move in against those guys. Need to defend the gunners. The horn. We will have to move through the gunners to kill the general. We have soldiers continue to fire! Trolls. We could still win. We killed 79% and lost 36%, so we are winning. Very good. Despite them massacring our infantry. What is happening? We killed a lot of their troops. They are broken here. Your bash of tribal warriors are broken. So this is the result I wanted when I fought the Faraki trolls outside the walls. But for some reason the AI were stupid and didn't use their guns properly. I did use the guns properly myself in the worst army but it wasn't enough. I killed about half the army because of uh, using the guns with that army. But despite having mostly rabble as infantry, but the AI army did so poorly that it with the gunners that they managed to win. There are some elites still fighting, like the Serpent Serpentine Guards. They are fighting our bodyguard, actually. Okay. We also have a few Dublin Infantry units still remaining. Unlike the Bruceers and the Rabble, they actually won their battles. Tinkers and the Death Tinkers were too few. We only restored very few of those guys. The trolls have broken. They, they, won't, they didn't stand and fight the last year. Okay, we only need to kill off their elite unit, the Serpentine War uh, Guards here. Okay. Now we can move forward the general. Good job. Tail Gunners! Won the battle. And it's all thanks to you. I believe they scared away the enemy. Stay we are winning against the infantry for sure. They broke. We have a lot of gunners. Didn't lose any of them. Or at least not many. Doesn't look like we lost many at least. Just that. Here, only one alive. Here we have dead enemy troops. It's very good that we won this battle, that means we will take two more areas. We'll take the villages uh, that are nearby. There are two villages former Ogre area held by the Gerbashi, and then a Gerbashi village. We'll take both of those areas. I don't believe any of them have garrison scripts. The ogre area doesn't have it for sure. <laughs> the Gerbash area, I don't think it has it either. <laughs> but I could be wrong, of course. Capital will be troublesome because they will spawn a lot of troops if we attack. We won't do it unless we have total numerical advantage. We need more than two armies against the capital. Because it will be a similar battle to the Faraki battle against their capital. They lost a lot of troops, and we lost a lot of troops too. Let's 
see the dead Briseers here, the goblins, trade colors. The dead Yurubashi Yangle trolls, the blue trolls. Small blue trolls, there are bigger carry trolls, they are also blue. They are not small, they are giant. So unlike the money trolls, the forest trolls that are green, and they mix between small trolls and giant trolls, while the frag trolls, the, the, the like uh, desert trolls, the yellow desert trolls, and the Yerubash blue trolls, they are only smaller trolls. So the forest trolls have a mix between the smaller trolls and giant trolls. And the Frag Trolls and the Gerberta Trolls have only smaller Trolls and then the Dracari Trolls, they are Blue Trolls too but they are Ice Trolls and they they only have Gaian Trolls Managed to, get, to take out the Raptors too, probably thanks to the Gunners They have Raptors that are blue They are not the same bluish color as the Dracari Those are different, they are more Light blue. Yeah, the, the Gurubash army is very similar to the Faraki army. Maybe the scorpions are better than the Gurubash troops. Don't know where our troops are. Enemies retreating over here. Entire unit here, 131 troops routed. Some of the troops might re re retreat into one of the villages. If that's the case, we'll have a problem. Then we need to kill them off there too, and they will fight to the death. We'll see how much stronger the area will be then with the remnants. We don't have any cavalry, so we can't easily ride them down. We need human bandit cavalry for that. And this army didn't have that. One of the armies that marched towards the fleet and boarded, boarded, uh, did border the fleet and then it's moving towards the Silesi Desert and the Kiradji faction. They have cavalry. Which will enable the faction to hunt down fleeing enemies. There's some flickering on this battlefield, but not in the battle. Only now when I move the camera. Point it at certain areas. The hub goblins did really well. We lost 26% of our army. They lost 84% of theirs. Yet some of them will manage to flee the battle. And survive and retreat to their, one of their villages. I think the Gurbash are very easy to defeat and the Farak trolls. That's, that's probably also because the Farak trolls spawn some elite units when we siege their, their capital. We won't do that with the Gurbash trolls. This was an epic battle. Yeah, they have uh, some serpentine guards, serpentine guards. Treating they are slower, moving than the other troops.
Yeah, a lot of dead in this battle. But the infantry of the goblins succeeded. If you look here, we have lost all but one Brazier, and the only one in the units. We lost pretty much all the Braziers. We restored some of the battle. We lost the elite troops, Tinkers, and the Death Dealers. We still have 201 Goblin Infantry, 216, 197, 219, 112. 131, so the Goblin Infantry is way better than the Brusseers. Much better because of the shield wall formation. It protects very well against arrows and javelins. And also can push enemy infantry forward. So yeah, the Goblin Infantry is a lot more worth to the to recruit than the Rabble or the Brusseers. And did well in the battle. They were the only ones that actually won against enemy infantry. The others lost. And I believe the Death Dealers could have won too if they had a fully sized unit. Tinkers, I don't know. Maybe. They are not as good as the Death Dealers, I don't know. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset, but our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. Yeah, we won the battle. The enemy flees the battle. And the battle here all can't hunt them down. Will be awed by the victory we have won here today. Trinkel Nogenfogger of the Trade Coalition had 2,980 goblins and mixed units. The Trade Coalition lost 902 uh, of the troops. And we have, uh, have uh, 2,028 remaining. Killed 2,184 of the enemy and took 101 captive. So anyone that is killed when they are broken and fleeing comes as capt captured or taken prisoner. Okay, even if they die in the battle, they count as prisoners. Okay, so we killed way more than we lost. This battle was actually really well fought. Captain Masuga of the Gurbashi jungle trolls had 2,783 trolls. Those 2,304 have 479 remaining that managed to flee. They will retreat to one of their areas, one of their villages, and then they kill 965 of our troops and took two prisoners. Here are the details. We have played for about 1 hour 55 minutes now. Almost 54 minutes, maybe. Something like that. Okay, casualties inflicted. See that Goblin Infantry kill 110, 67. Pet Musketeers kill 254, a really good unit. Goblin Infantry did well too. Goblin Tail Gunners kill 251, 340. The unit of Goblin Infantry kill 186. Okay, one of the Tail Gunners kill only 84. A Bruiser unit kill 124. Now they kill 143. Okay, and the Telegram unit kill 73. The Border Guard kill 63 of the enemy. Tinkers only killed 23. The Destillers kill 23. Too. Tinkers kill 22, I believe. Okay. The post recording here. But I think we did very well. I think we did very well. Prisoners captured of the Gurbashi jungle trolls. Enemies captured. Gurbashi primitives, jungle stalkers, more primitives, troll spears. More tr primitives and spears. Primitives, troll axe throwers, troll warriors, Gurbashi tribal warriors, and troll spears will execute them. Get another general. Yeah, it's fine. Troops had some losses. Many of the troops retreated into the Mosh Og Ogre Mound, Motten Bailey area, if you want. We'll march there next. Here we can attack. They have one elite unit here, the General Blood Lord.
Mandokiri. Mandokir, Blood Lord, Mandokir of the Gurbashi tribe, faction leader. We have their leader here. I think we'll fight this battle immediately. Because I want to try and kill their leader. So we'll fight this battle too. Didn't spawn any garrison here. And they certainly won't script in the ogre area either. But they have the defeated. Okay, start deployment. We are controlling a captain in this battle, which is a tail gunner unit. The tail gunners are captains. They're the captains of the goblins. Battle. The enemy has only infantry that is elite. Send in the troops. Send in the rabble. And uh, send in. Send in all the units. The captain dies. We'll try to keep him behind the other troops. This is a battle until all our troops are uh, routed or until they are victorious. I don't believe they will fight to the death, they will rout or win. We didn't place the Goblin infantry in shield wall. So I think they do better against melee infantry when they are not in shield wall. They might place one of them in shield wall. In case we are doing a mistake, I want at least one of the units to be in shield wall formation. long, slightly more. It's fine. Sometimes it could be good to make longer videos. I enjoyed this more than the previous episode because we did more stuff. We did what I had planned to do in the previous episode but I ended up fighting the same battle the entire three hour long episode. Goblins will march into the city and fight their elite unit. Send a horn with the captain. Tell gunner captain. Whenever we do not have a general, it will be a captain, but I believe the captain could be a different unit sometimes. Now we are controlling, I believe, a unit of rabble. The tail gunner is an officer of the rabble, I believe that's where we control him. Really good model, I think. I don't like how these guys have gotten stuck. Already killed a lot of the rabble. One unit of this 
disciples of Kar. They're also killing the others. Might place them in real wall. Order them to attack. Might do better that way. I would like this village too. I'll try to prevent them from winning. I like that the captain is standing like he's supposed to use this. Like he's about to use his gun. Of course the captain can't use a gun. No captain or general can, can use ranged attacks. <coughs> this is like the worst type of settlement. A village. Still wanted. Can upgrade it. A town and then a large town. So it's two levels below the Gadgets large town. Most of the areas in Kalimdor are large towns. appear to be gaining the upper hand in these battles. They are losing the balance of power for some reason. They killed up to 2%, we killed only 3%. Okay, not good. They will win against the rabble. They are just being slaughtered. Can't really do much. The Goblin infantry, I thought they would be able to win. Hardly killed anyone, we killed 4% of their elite bodyguard. They are quite numerous, 145. They are in free wall formation. They're still getting slaughtered. Our men have fought long and are becoming tired. Trolls are huge compared to the goblins. They look really big. I think the Gurbata trolls are bigger than the Faraka trolls too. At least they look slightly bigger. Slightly taller. Might be their gear makes them look taller. Lord, preserve us! We have lost half of our men. Yeah, we might fail at taking the village here. The enemy king is slain. Kill their king. The enemy, Good. But no less a dead for that. We are lucky. Their faction might be destroyed. We are lucky. If they do not have an heir. Then they will be destroyed. As we kill their leader. Disciples of Kar. If we're lucky, we can win the battle, but I think they might win. Killed only 9% of the enemy, they killed 59% of our troops. Numbers, they're not enough. Knew that the rabble will it would just be slaughtered. Goblin infantry hoped would be able to win. Oh, 
could fast forward. fighting here. Well, it doesn't look, they still have 122 troops. Our general is protected behind that building, that's good. any better. Short with the rabble too. Good, we took down one of them there. Let's slow down the game a bit. Okay, so we killed 28% of the enemy, they killed 84% of our troops. Yeah, we will lose the battle. No doubt, the troops will probably break soon. They are too strong, they're elite units. Even against the Goblin Infantry. really need the basic troops and medium troops replaced with better troops. They are not very good. Let's speed up again. We are running out of troops now. We ended up slaughtering our troops. Killed 30%. They hit 94% of our troops. We needed way more troops to be able to take the village from an elite unit like this. All of them will be slaughtered or flee. We'll see what will happen. They like the look of that goblin. Infantry unit with the helmet. The others also look good, but the uh, one with the helmet look better. No wonder we're losing. They are huge. Huge giant weapons too. Okay, we'll move out. To take control of the captain. Maybe they haven't dropped because they have the captain still alive in the back here. Now they are almost out of troops. Now we are dueling some troops here. Killed all the troops. Only the captain remaining. Ah, he's just the captain. I didn't bother to retreat with him. And the goblins are not as fast as the trolls. We can't outrun them either. They have uh, 103. 
crew was remaining. This was a total failure. Our foolish general has thrown his life away.